Praise the Lord. Good evening. This is December the 29th, and we're at our Bible study at Christ Community Church. It's so good to see you. Uh, in my mind, I can see you. And uh, since that you're watching this, we're in chapter 13, uh, The Christian's Obligation to Government. And we'll talk about this connection uh, in just a moment, but we want to open up in prayer. Um, we have um, Sister Janet Hill. We want to be remembering her in prayer. Uh, Sister Daisy Smith and family and Marquila Rounds. We want to remember them in prayer. Uh, there's so many others that we could include and call out their names. Syl Sylvia Boy Taylor, uh, so many others. Uh, but I want you to just visualize who's missing, who haven't you heard from, and who do you want God to bless? And let's ask God's blessing. Father, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you for this Bible study. As we're looking at this 13th chapter, uh, what a wonderful lesson in the 12th chapter. We thank you, Lord, as we uh, look at our role and then we look at our civic responsibility. Bless this time. This can be a controversial chapter or pericope. Bless it, God, give us understanding. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, the connection between Romans 12, and you'll uh, need to just go back to that. As a matter of fact, we can go back in just a moment. But the connection between chapters 12 and 13 are clear. The Christian is not to seek vengeance, and it does not uh, seek to be a wrongdoer fighting uh, the policies that, that God has set up through the government to deal with sinful men and women. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll flesh it out uh, in a moment. But uh, here, let's begin. There's 14 verses, so this will be a brief lesson. But 14 verses in Romans 13. Uh, verses 1 and 2 deal with the government's legitimate authority and the believer or the Christian's response. It says in verse 13, verse 1, let every soul be subject to governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will, be, will bring judgment on themselves. So it starts out, uh, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. Um, we have a responsibility to uh, not seek personal vengeance. Vengeance, we'll see later on, is mine, saith the Lord. And so the best citizens ought to be believing citizens. Um, as we are preparing, as we are a part of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, uh, God transforms us and lives through us and we model godly behavior which is true and righteous and good and merciful. Uh, we ought to be outstanding citizens uh, to the world. Uh, and so we allow ourselves to be subject. Why? For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So here, uh, the, the real deal is God is in complete authority. There are no authorities except for God. We subject ourselves to governing authorities because they are appointed by God, and serve a purpose in his plan. Hmm. So uh, as long as uh, the ordinances and the laws are not contrary or repugnant or ungodly uh, to the word of God, for the word of God is truth, as long as it's not repugnant or opposite of that, then we are to comply, we are to follow. Uh, and why? Because they are appointed uh, by God. No authority exists except from God. 
Uh, and so we respond accordingly. It says, therefore, verse 2, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment upon themselves. God uses governing authorities as a check upon humankind's sinful desires and tendencies. And so uh, sin, like cancer, if left unchecked, it spreads. And uh, the heart is desperately wicked. I am reminded of Genesis, the sixth chapter, when God was sorry that he made man because every thought that was going through man's mind continually was evil. And so God then told Noah to build a boat and uh, that there would be a flood uh, and God was going to start all over again. So holiness is still uh, the theme that we need to remember, that God is holy and he expects his people to be therefore holy. Verse 3 through four is the job of the government. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid for he does not wear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Now, we are living in some uh, interesting times uh, where there have been those who were God's ministers who were out of order, uh, and that needed to be checked. That needs to be checked. God is not unleashing evil to correct evil. Uh, that doesn't work. He releases righteousness and love and justice and mercy to deal with uh, and, and correct uh, mis or sinful or evil behavior. You do not use evil to correct evil. Good must be used. And so if uh, officers act inappropriately, uh, then they need to be reprimanded. Um, and whatever degree of the, the nature of the infraction. Um, and so, but uh, not all officers are bad officers. Uh, you have some outstanding uh, uh, officers and or ministers. And one of the things as a chaplain, I'm a chaplain for police and fire, my, my feel uh, specifically is, is police, and uh, I remind them that they are called to a righteous duty, a righteous responsibility, and so I ask God's righteousness and his wisdom uh, be upon them and his protection uh, be upon them to protect them from evil men and women um, because Verse 4, they are God's minister to do you for good. Those that are um, seeking to be fine and upstanding officers uh, are going to do good to the public, to the general public. Uh, and so you want them to be blessed. You want them to be protected. You want them to walk in wisdom. You want them uh, to... Uh, in seeking wisdom, and this is one of the roles that I do, uh, what does the Bible say? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. So I challenge the officers, pray. Uh, prayer changes things, even if it's a quick prayer, uh, for wisdom. Uh, you know, every uh, situation, every call is a different call. Nothing is identical uh, or the, the exact same thing. They're different They're in some sort of a way, but... Uh, it causes the officers to have to be able to be quick and thinking on their feet. They only have, in some cases, seconds, seconds to make a, a wise decision. And so 
Uh, what person wouldn't if, if they knew that God wants to willingly bless you and give you wisdom because uh, God ultimately loves uh, everyone. The Bible says God so loved the world. Uh, and so God wants, even when he uses a punishment to deter misbehavior, it's still done in love and done because of love. For he is, verse 4, God's minister to you for good, but if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. Um, they understood that, uh, what that language meant, not bearing the stone uh, in vain. Um, they wore swords, and uh, that was what they used to uh, fight and to bring judgment. Uh, generally, there was uh, beheading uh, of an individual for capital punishment. Uh, the crucifixion was reserved for the most egregious or the worst of criminals. Isn't it something that uh, Jesus was put on a cross? Uh, but Paul is speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and he's letting them know the readers of this letter, uh, that they have nothing to fear if they are engaged in good behavior, good works. Uh, not that those in, a, uh, in office might not make the wrong assessment, but God ultimately uh, is in control. It doesn't mean that God is sitting off on some side, apathetic and uninvolved, no. Uh, God is watching, God is controlling, and God is working uh, it all out. It's a part, some kind of way, it's a part of a larger plan, but he's working it for your good. And so let me just share, if you're in a situation in which uh, you believe that the uh, minister, God's minister to do good is not doing the right thing, uh, then you pray and ask God uh, for the right uh, action and response. God, how do I uh, work alongside with you in helping this officer realize that um, uh, th their show of force is unnecessary or their decisions are unnecessary? Um, give me wisdom, God. Verses 5 through 7, uh, there's a Christian responsibility towards government. 5 through 7 says, Therefore, you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For because of this you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. And so the, um, again, the Christian's obedience to the state, to the government is never blind, is never blind, but it obeys with the eyes of conscience, and um, they're clear on the directions that they take, that they are the right directions, or what's, asking, what's being asked of them is appropriate. Um, you give honor to whom honor is due, fear to whom fear is due, customs to whom customs, taxes to whom taxes are due. Uh, because actually, uh, if they're used right, they're not used, they're, they should not be used to enhance the pocket of the politician uh, where, uh, to make him or her wealthy, which is uh, unfortunately uh, what has happened. Um, it's almost as if you, you'd have to be a millionaire, a multimillionaire to run for or to be in uh, some of these seats and they are almost held for life. Uh, and, and what happens is where initially 
the taxes uh, uh, were, were assigned or designed to help or support the public. I mean, when I think about uh, school districts run by taxes, when I'm thinking about the library, police department, fire department, uh, taxes, um, there to protect or to educate or to uh, help in learning and explanation. Uh, these are where our tax dollars ought to go and not in some uh, sub bank account of a politician. And so uh, let's pick up verse 8 through 10. Owe no one except to, except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet, and if there is any other commandment are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And so here, the, the debt that I should always carry uh, is a debt to love my neighbor. This is a perpetual obligation that we carry before God and each other. Um, as we think about it, love is this permanent obligation. So there's a way that I am to interact with the government. There's a way I'm to interact with uh, the ministers who are, are the vanguards or the protectors of the law and carry out the law and ensure that there's no infraction of the law without consequence. But then there's a Christian obligation to his neighbors. And, uh, Sometimes we, we forget it. Um, we're in a, a time or a season, November, December, it started even before then, where there was requests on television and radio for uh, resources. Uh, there's a, it's the end of the fiscal year of a number of, of, of businesses, nonprofits, and so they uh, request resources. Uh, and that's fine. Um, but I, I would venture to say, let it not be the only time that we're provoked to good works and giving. Uh, let it be not just your fiscal period, November or October through December, but let it be the whole year, the whole year, uh, where we're listening to the Lord as he is directing us in how to give. The Bible talks about uh, we can rob God of tithe and offering. Sometimes we uh, uh, only just talk about the tithe, which is 10% of your resources, and we don't talk about the offering. Uh, but we need to talk about tithe and offering because that's what the Bible does. It talks about both the tithing, uh, if you're a member of a church um, or, or a uh, religious institution, it, um, and you are being fed there, you're being ministered to there, uh, tithe. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's almost like going to a restaurant and uh, they feed you, they give you a list, uh, they let you pick out what you want, you are fed, and then you get up and go. And you say, and they stop you and they say, well, wait a minute, uh, there was an expense. And you say, yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a pay the person down the way. You're going to pay the person down the way. Why would you do that? Well, because um, they're a friend of mine. Well, listen, but you ate at the restaurant. And so where are you spiritually being fed? Um, tithe there. Um, if you're a member of the church, tithe there. So if you're not a member of a church, then 
you want to find a place that's feeding you, then tithe. And, and look to get connected. Look to get, uh, uh, and, and why wouldn't you become a member? Uh, God would not have that we would have orphans. Uh, he has set it up where you can be a member of a church and be a part of a family, a body of believers who know your name, know your story, and love you unabashedly uh, because this is the will of the Lord. Uh, now, that's tithing. Offering, uh, you can give that to the church or you can put that in various ministries, uh, uh, nonprofits, uh, organizations that help uh, with those who are struggling with addictions. Um, you know, there's Gambling Anonymous or um, uh, there's a host of other well-run, noteworthy organizations. You can give an offering there. Your tithe, you'd give to the church. Your offering, you'd give to an organization or a mission department. Or if uh, the pastor says, listen, look, we're going to give, uh, we'd like to give a certain amount to a missionary, and we give our offering. And so um, we want to uh, be a blessing because um, love is a permanent obligation, a debt that is impossible to discharge. Uh, let me take a look at verses 11. Before I do through 14, uh, love does no harm to a neighbor, verse 10. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. In verse 11 through 14, we want to put on Christ and do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in robbery, reverie and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. And so as we're thinking about Paul as he's writing to the church uh, and to the reader and uh, death is probably looming for him. He doesn't know uh, what his uh, fate is going to be, but uh, he has unabashedly, unapologetically, um, delved into the work of the Lord. Um, at one time he was on the wrong side of God, but he met uh, the Lord Jesus on the road to Damascus. And when he was delivered, when he was saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, he delved right in. He jumped right in to the ministry. Um, and he's warning uh, the reader uh, don't waste time. We should be all the more energetic and committed to walk right with God instead of sleepwalk with God. Now, you can sleepwalk. Uh, you, you know that uh, some people uh, will talk in their sleep or hear things in their sleep. Um, they'll uh, sing in their sleep. Uh, uh, fight in their sleep. I know that I may, uh, if I am into that dream, that REM sleep, and uh, I'll be, I've had several in, uh, injuries uh, because I was fighting and jumping out the bed and all this calisthenics. Uh, and so I wasn't awake, but I was asleep, but I was doing things, is the point. It is not time for 
believers to just be busy doing things and not awake and walking with the Lord. You can be caught up in many religious things and still be asleep toward God. So it is important for every believer to make sure that they are truly awake and active in their life before God. And so uh, he says, therefore, verse 12, the night is far spent. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, 2020 uh, helped remind me that uh, the end could come at any time. 2021 was not that much better. 2022, we're trying to make this pivot and, and be uh, creative as far as uh, this new normal. Um, and we were recognizing, and Paul is saying, we're going to have to, verse 14, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we put on Christ, we put on all the armor of God and are equipped to do what? Both to defend and then to attack. And putting on Christ is a strong and vivid metaphor. It means more than put on the character of the Lord Jesus Christ, but signifying rather, let Jesus Christ himself be the armor you wear. And so then the challenge is, if I'm doing that, putting on the armor, it's, I, I'm, I'm wearing Christ, I then make no provision for the flesh. The flesh will be as active as we allow it to be. Mm. Let me say that again. The flesh will be as active as we allow it to be. We have to work to do we have a work to do in walking properly as in the day. We have a work to do. Huh. Powerful. Short passage, 14 scriptures, but powerful. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Amen. We thank God for... Uh, the Bible study on tonight, we said it would be brief. Uh, may the Lord bless you and may he watch over you as we are approaching a new year. Uh, we thank God for the new year. Uh, let's pray now uh, that uh, God would bless us uh, as we prepare to move forward. Uh, to align ourselves in his will according to the truth of his word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your bountiful blessing. We thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this word that helps to order our steps. Bless us, Father, that we will cooperate and collaborate with the government, uh, that we see the officers as ministers of God, that we love everybody, that we know that we have an obligation to love that will never be fulfilled. And Lord, let us put on Christ the armor that we need and make no provision for the flesh that we might be tools for the Father because of the Son, by the Holy Spirit, to advance the kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Before I let you go, let me uh, thank the staff. Uh, you have done an outstanding job uh, this year. I believe this is the last tape for 2021. And so I thank you, I thank you viewers. Um, for joining with us and taking the trek through the book of Romans. We're still not through. We'll begin 2022 uh, in that 14th chapter. We will have uh, just three chapters left, 14th, 15th, and 16th. And then we will be going into another book. 
uh, the theme for 2022 will uh, come out of the book of Nehemiah, and we might use uh, that book uh, as the book that we teach from. Uh, so call in, write in, uh, and let me know if you have other suggestions. But uh, we're leaning towards just taking us through the book of Nehemiah so that as we're preaching these themes, uh, you'll be familiar with the text and understand what it means to relaunch, rebuild, and refresh. God bless you. We will have a New Year's Eve service. It'll be a uh, business meeting. It will be brief. The, uh, the service will start at 1030. And so uh, for those who are not going to join us in the sanctuary, please join us virtually. God bless you. Have a blessed night.